What's up, Rooster Nation? Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster Channel, where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. A rainy Sunday afternoon. I'm headed for sushi over here at Koi. All right, I got a bunch of stuff that I need to get edited, but today, I honestly don't know what I'm gonna edit. I'm just gonna pick something out, and hopefully it turns out watchable and entertaining and maybe educational. Here it goes. Good morning and welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. This morning I am working on a column. It's approximately 12 foot tall. Just a eyeballing it, just a guess. I haven't measured, but it's about what it is. Circa 1902. We've had a bee problem in this column for multiple years. And now the tenant's starting to get stung, so they must have some aggressive traits that have come in with this recent swarm or recent round of genetics from whatever drones they bred with. They've tried to exterminate them multiple times and can't get rid of them, so I have to remove them. The heat signature comes almost halfway down that column. So that's a big colony in this column, but... I'll be here most of the day. <laughs> I'll be here all week, thank you. I gotta clean off all that trash up top. I'm gonna put a trap cone on one of these top entrances, probably the, probably the top one. Close off the rest of them. Clean out all this expanding foam that they've put in and put something a little more permanent. So they've They've tried to block them out. They just can't get it done. You know, you know, expanding foam doesn't work. So I've brought my nailer and, and uh, compressor, some little trim boards, to make sure there's a permanent blockage instead of this uh, rather unsightly mess. This probably doesn't jump right out at you, but I got stung in the eyelid yesterday, so I'm a little puffy all in here. First thing I got yesterday doing a removal. I'm, one of the only two stings I think is all I got but uh, not really bothering me just a little puffy it'll go away quick enough probably by the end of today it'll be gone except for the except for the little dot the sting site I'm taking it they leave this light on all night because there's just dead bees all over the front porch so they're really unknowingly causing themselves problems with a colony this big and this active keeping a light on right at their front door where they're coming in and out. There's two more doors on the side, but it doesn't appear that they use them. This is a nice little old neighborhood in the, in the older part of Slidell, Louisiana. It's been quite a morning getting started. Had a little trouble finding some of my tools that I needed. I twisted my ankle and fell down the stairs. <laughs> Now I'm dealing with a puffy eye. Let's see how this thing goes. Hopefully this job goes a little better. Just met with the property owner. He's the one that's been drilling these holes and trying to exterminate. And he said he had the same problem with a house right down the street. I don't know if he exterminated or somebody took care of him, but he just wasn't able to get this one done. It looks like he might have had problems with that column down there too, because I see a bunch of scabbed up blocking around there. Mine's gonna look a lot prettier though. <laughs> I take pride in my grits. Well, I leave my smoker sitting for a long time and it's really heavily packed. I turn the spout away from the wind so it kind of drafts it out. Of course, the wind changes directions. So if it changes directions, then you might be out. I just saw something impressive. I couldn't get my camera out fast enough, but a little bird, I think that's him right there. He's gray on top, yellow on the bottom. I don't know what he is, but he just swooped through here and grabbed a bee on his way through. And the only reason I knew what he got was he made a loop here and landed on that branch right there and was sitting there eating it. But it was quick. Snagged a bee out of the air. There's a lot of foam up there. And a bird nest in it. <laughs> Making a little activity up there. I started smoking down here. See him blowing smoke back out the hole. 
I got that column full of smoke right now, but where they are, the the comb and everything's so tight and it's probably not gonna flow. I hadn't seen any smoke come out the holes up here. There's a hole there, 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 there. I ain't seen the first puff of smoke out those, but I've seen three hive beetles and two bees come out way down here. So I don't know how long the comb is in that, but halfway is my heat signature. So I'm saying it's a big, big colony. When you got them tight in a space like that, it is really, really hard to run smoke up through all that. So thankfully this old guy had drilled these holes previously, but I do have a hammer drill if I need to run any more holes in it. I'm just gonna blow smoke and repellent on them until I get them to come out. The ones that are out foraging coming back are not wanting to go in, so I'm making some progress. Uh -huh. Yeah, come out of there, boat up. This is how I block them out. Trim and silicone. Make sure my joints are tight. And then anywhere I can't get trim, get silicone. Now, sometimes I use paintable. Up here, I'm just using straight silicone. Nobody will ever see this. It'll get a coat of paint. I'm using almond. It'll dry a little darker than that. And this column's dirty anyway. Ain't no way to match it. Around here, the bees can't get through, but he had expanding foam there. So I went ahead and ran a bead there. Around on this side, hard to show you from here, but squirrels that chewed that, so that was a little tougher. All the holes that they drilled previous really helped me out on this. This time I didn't have to spin up here on the ladder with a hammer drill. And he had blocked off where their original entrance was up top. They had already blocked that off with expanding foam, which did won't keep them out, but it had stopped the flow from the top. So they're just using these holes, which is good for me. Look who shows up on my job and just scares the life out of me. I'm, I got my earbuds in, listening to music. <laughs> Sneaks up behind me and, and, and just, I about had a heart attack on the ground down there. Yeah, well, you know why I snuck up on you? How I, you know I snuck up on you? Huh. I had the monk mobile. <laughs> <laughs> I was on quiet mode. We it's on silent. Prayer mode. It's on prayer mode. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know what prayer mode is on that thing. Please, Lord, don't let me get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with two inches of ground clearance, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking about putting some mutters on it, though. That's a low rider. I'd lift, I'd lift that thing at least four inches. <laughs> Shoot, that's just so I won't drag the uh, transmission. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were just talking about we were just talking about how nice it is to be working in the shade over here because it's, it's kind of warm outside today. It is for for uh, May first. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's warm. And I'm stirring bees and vacuuming, stirring vac. See the cluster? Just put my smoker up from where I got scared. From where from where you scared me and I dropped it. <laughs> I got my fire extinguisher. You, you didn't even, you didn't even hear me, did you? I had no clue you were here. <laughs> Look, I was filming you, and you was just, and I, then I got down. I was on the ground, and you still didn't see me. <laughs> I was constant. <laughs> I was concentrating, man. I wouldn't have been scared anywhere else, but we're in. We're too close to New Orleans. It's <laughs> no, still 30 miles away. <laughs> 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 There's the vac of choice for this job. The young guy, a bumblebee wants to get in there. Yeah, that bumblebee don't want to get in there. There's more bees in there than he knows. <laughs> I saw that one on, on your video last time where the bumblebee comes in there and they pump on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One bee. One yeah. bee took him out. Look, you see? That bumblebee trying to mess with those bees. Quick little discussion on a fire extinguisher. I've got a, a colony here that's probably half full of comb all that wax in there and no telling what else could be there was there was uh squirrel chewed spots up top here could be old squirrel nest junk in there you never know what's inside these columns anytime that i'm smoking something for long periods of time that i can't get into this space or don't or i'm not going to have it open mm -hmm. i've got a fire extinguisher with me because you never know uh don't ask me how i know i've never burned anybody's house down but 
take it from me. You should have a fire extinguisher on site. Yeah, good advice from the rooster. There you go. <laughs> it should be like in one of the, the safety books. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be in my new course coming out in 2025 how not to burn your customer's property to the ground you know i noticed in your in your last video that as you're working those bees i noticed that that old log that you pulled off of the, the beach front yeah it was still in there it is you know i was thinking about standing it up and putting a cap on it but I thought, you know, if I leave it on its side, I'll just get it up out of the mud. If I leave it on the side and put a cap on either side, and I can, then I can still work it. I can, I can harvest, and I can, I can't reach all the way through, but I can reach most of it. And then, and then the uh, the state guys will, won't bother you. Put a frame in there just to say, well, oh, there is a frame in there. He <laughs> <laughs> coming out now. Pick you in the hole. Hey, while you're up there, why don't you grab those wires and shove them in there? <laughs> There's a lot of forage that's coming back. A lot. I see a lot of pollen going in. Words of wisdom? Next thing. Hey, I heard you even say ow. It's the first time I ever heard the rooster say ow. <laughs> Yeah, I usually go. <laughs> <laughs> that one wasn't too bad, though, so I just said, ow. <laughs> I see smoke coming out of the front hole now. The bees are coming out of the top, too. Yeah. I got half a pine tree stuff in there. I didn't video that far. I should have. <laughs> That'll put the burn on them. <laughs> Hey, when you leave, burn rubber. Look, if you push behind it, I might get some rubber out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to them horses. Um. I gotta turn off the air conditioner so that uh, I might be able to get a little bit more horsepower. I smell the racing gas you're burning in it. That's 100 octane. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually it's 105. 
five. I want to try to get some eyes. Here we go. You ready? Go ahead. Listen to that power. Wait, I got to press harder on the brakes. Must be up on the rev limiter. I hear it. Yun, 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 yun. I'm redlining. It's only at 1,200 RPMs. <laughs> Getting on towards the end of the day. I think I've about got just about all of them. The column's full of smoke, top to bottom right now. Unless they're hanging on the brood, there ain't much place for them to go. And I think I've about run everybody out. One thing, most of this is foragers coming back, not wanting to go in the holes. Except for that bunch up top, they came out. Knocking those numbers down. As we close out this video, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown of how the job went, maybe a couple of pointers. These column removals are incredibly time consuming, difficult at times. You may have seen a couple of others on my channel where I've had to cut columns open. This guy didn't want to cut this column for any reason and so we were stuck running the bees out so there's probably <laughs> if i had to guess there's a hundred pounds of honey in that column probably still to this day and because we encased it entombed it whatever you want to call it i sealed that column top to bottom because i guaranteed the guy he wouldn't get bees back he was nervous about hiring me anyway so well, how do I know you won't just run off and not come back? I said, dude, been doing this a long time. I'm going to be in the business. Don't worry about it. I guarantee you won't have bees back in this column. Can't speak for the rest of the house. Anyway, you're running bees up, down. Uh, they're, they're just trying to get away from the smoke. They're trying to fan smoke out of the space. So you're dealing with bees running to the bottom of the column, top of the column. you gotta you got to know how to work them and how to steer them. It's like herding cattle. If you smoke too much up top, you're going to run a bunch of bees to the bottom and then you got to deal with two, three thousand, four thousand bees in the bottom of the column that you can't get. So, <clears throat> so you got to start low, start running them up and just herding them to the top. Serious about the fire extinguisher? Be sure if you try one of these, have a fire extinguisher on hand. You catch a little ember in there. When your smoker starts running low, you blow a little fire in there, maybe catch something up. With all that wax in there, you could have a serious problem on your hands. So just be careful if you ever attempt these. I did get the queen out on this one. The colony failed a couple months later. They never did kick back off and do very well. Uh, she she started laying again, but they never just never did recover. And uh, just that's just one of the chances you take doing removals like this. I, I really was surprised I got her in the first place because of how long it took me to get them out of there. Uh, sometimes you don't get them on these. Anyway, that was what that was on that column. Uh, I want to say a quick happy birthday to Bermuda Mike. He's turning 40. Enjoy the Dirt Rooster swag, Mike. Hope I'm not ruining a surprise, but thanks for watching the program, buddy, and thanks for the order. And y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one. You ain't gonna believe this. Well, Mr. Ed will believe it. Y'all might not believe it. Eight o'clock on a Tuesday night. Going to try to run some bees out of a column. And I don't have any other time to do it, so it's now or never. All right, I just pulled the base of this column up. And here's what I'm finding at the base. That's hive beetle larva. This was a bird nest at the top of the column. It had a little bit of comb on it when I pulled it out and I saw how wet it was right there. I knew something bad was going on. And as soon as I looked in the top of the column, I could see wax moth larva and hive beetle larva. So I knew immediately it's a sick colony. But I still gotta get them out. They're still showing a pretty good heat signature, so I think there's still a decent number of bees in there trying to work. I'm pulling this up to try to run a bunch of smoke through that hole right there. 
Not gonna be easy. Got a, probably a couple hours of work ahead of me. And that's what I'm doing tonight.